The war between Goths and Marilyn Manson fans actually came about through something very big, deep and important to the scene to this day. It was a genuine danger to the lifestyles of actual goths who were just living their lives, you did not want to be seen as one of those kids on the goth scene. So even though you liked his music, you you didn't want anyone to know and you did not dance to his songs when anyone was looking. Oh, a nostalgic video! It feels like a really long time since I've gone back and talked about the old goth scene, so bet your butt I had to pull out my good old Evil Inside t-shirt, crimp my hair and, and go a bit ridiculous with my makeup since we're talking about Marilyn Manson here in part. And uh, I think we have to agree that I have the best mum in the world when I just went downstairs to get my water and my mum said, oh I love your makeup! <laughs> Even I am not sure about this and whether it's a bit too much, but my mum really loves it. Props to my mum. But anyway, this video was inspired because I finally the other day took you guys' suggestion of trying to recreate one of my really old pictures. So here was the result. Same coat, same jewellery, same star on the tree, same curtains, and uh, 21 years apart. How has 21 years passed between these two photos? But anyway, in the original picture, I was heading out that night to see Marilyn Manson on his Guns, God and Government tour, and someone else commented saying, but I thought you didn't really like Marilyn Manson that much. How come you went to his gig? And I think something that needs explaining here is that in the 90s and early 2000s, there was a huge rift between goths versus spooky kids, i.e. Marilyn Manson fans. That's what they were known as back in the day. And if you were goth, you did not ever want to be seen to be a Marilyn Manson fan. So even though most goths secretly did like Marilyn Manson and secretly did own his CDs, you would put those CDs in the cupboard, you wouldn't want your friends to see them when they came round. If they played Marilyn Manson at a goth club and they did, you didn't get up and dance. Even if you loved the song, even if you wanted to dance, you did not get up and dance because you could not be seen to be a Marilyn Manson fan on the goth scene. And I know that sounds completely ridiculous these days when most goths are open about Marilyn Manson. Even though his music is not goth in the slightest, I would say there probably isn't a goth out there who doesn't like at least one Marilyn Manson song. But anyway, the war between goths and Marilyn Manson fans. The reason for this boiled down to two things. <laughs> One of them was the slightly stupid, a little bit gatekeepy attitude that there were a lot of Manson fans out there who didn't like goth music, who didn't listen to goth music, who didn't even know what goth music was, and they were claiming that the music they liked was goth. So these bands were usually Marilyn Manson, Korn, Slipknot, uh, Limp Biscuit, the Deftones, and they would dress in black and trench coats and they would claim that these bands were goth, which obviously they are not. Um, and obviously this is an argument that runs to this day. Uh, after the whole Marilyn Manson spooky kids thing, it turned into emos. Oh my god, emos think they're goth and their music's not goth. These days it's mumble rap with, you know, Lil Peep and the goth boy click and baby goth, and you still get people on their videos commenting saying, but this isn't goth music! And I really feel like this is kind of a disease of youth, that when you're young and you're getting into the goth scene, you get very touchy and very precious about what goth actually is, and you feel the need to defend it and to say, this isn't goth, it's polluting my scene, what the hell? Um, and I think once you get older slash more mature, you come to realise that it really, really doesn't matter. The word goth has been corrupted in so many different ways at this point that I feel like it's it's really pointless getting precious about these things. However, it wasn't, this wasn't the body of the conflict. It wasn't just this shallow little thing that people were picking on. The real rift between goths and spooky kids actually came about through something very big, deep and important to the scene to this day and that was the matter of bullying. Now, bear in mind, this was the era of the Columbine school 
setting. This was the era of the Craft movie coming out. The Buffy the Vampire Slayer series about Evil Willow and how she got into witchcraft and it, there's like this, it was kind of like drugs the way they, they portrayed witchcraft and how it corrupted her and made her crazy. So all of these things combined, but particularly the Columbine School and the fact that they'd been wearing trench coats, they'd been linked to Marilyn Manson's music, even though all of this was nonsense, as it turned out later if you've read the book uh, that came out about 15 years after Columbine and is very in-depth and is worth a read. Um, at the time, the belief was goths did the Columbine school shitting, they are all desperately unhinged, they are violent. I mean, if you've seen the video that I made about what it was like to be goth in the post-Columbine era, even in the UK, um, I was in college, I wrote a violent poem, they genuinely believed, like, this person is a goth, they've written a violent poem, they're literally going to enact what they've written. <laughs> it was crazy. I will link that video below if you haven't seen it already, if you want to watch that afterwards. But this was the attitude of fear that surrounded goths in this time. It was they're violent and scary, and unfortunately Marilyn Manson fans, the spooky kids, a lot of them used this culture of fear to dress goth, not because they were into the music, but because they liked the bullying power it gave them. So this is why the term Morgoth was a really dirty word back in the day. Like, Morgoth was an embarrassing thing to be called. You did not want to be called a Morgoth. Even though these days it's become like, oh my god, Morgoth stylistics, you're so 90s chic and all of this. Back then, more goths were a dirty word because they weren't goths. They were spooky kids in general. And bear in mind, this was when the internet was in its infancy. There was no such thing as cringe pages, and the term edgelord had not yet been created. <sighs> These spooky kids, they loved the fear factor that dressing goth in this era gave them. So they would do things like hang out in big gangs in a mall, all wearing trench coats, they would have vampire fangs in, they would often carry knives, like, you know, the really swirly, fancy-looking knives. Um, and they would, you know, if anyone walked too close, they would bare their fangs at them and go <sighs> at the people walking past, you know, really cringy stuff like this. Or they'd be sitting in diners and they'd start biting into each other's necks and pretending to feed on each other. Um, or they'd start talking loudly about Satanism. They'd start pretending to do satanic rituals in the middle of the dining hall in the mall. Like, I, I sh you not. I mean, th there is a whole website out there that has a lot of nostalgia nostalgic uh, memories of people who were into this kind of thing and maybe in a future video I will have to read you some of the best cherry pickings of this because my god spooky kids in the 90s and 2000s were cringy and that goes for me too like as a young goth and a young pagan goth I remember threatening kids at school that I was going to curse them and stuff. You know, the kind of cringy thing you do when you're a teenager and you're bullied and suddenly the culture of the time you're in has given you this, this dark power. The only way you can think to fight back is to try and creep people out. But obviously all of this behaviour in malls, all of these people being quite threatening, and in some cases they were outright bullying. Like, these kids, they would literally walk in big groups or even even alone, if they were like a, a tall guy on his own, they would follow women down streets um, in their trench coats, being deliberately threatening. Um, but m most of it went on in public in malls, overall tarring the reputation of goths. Because these people would call themselves goths, their stylistics were basically goth. There wasn't a huge amount of choice in goth fashion at that time. So goths and spooky kids all looked very similar, and nobody on the goth scene wanted to be associated with this awful, cringy, bullying, intimidating behaviour. And the other element of this was religion. And I'm not talking about the Christians who were like up in arms about all of this, although obviously that was a thing, particularly in America, that, you know, there was this fear that, you know, goths were ruining Christian values and they were all Satanists and devil worshippers. And if your child was dressing goth, you should send them off to military school to be straightened out. And this did happen to kids. You know, I was very lucky 
in my case with with the whole Columbine situation and the poem I wrote that my parents were chill parents and that I live in England where military schools really aren't a thing um, but kids in America in my situation who wrote a violent poem who were goth they would often be punished so severely by their schools who were so afraid they were going to commit acts of violence or that they were satanists that they would throw them out of school and they would recommend that their parents sent them off to military school to cure them of their evil satanic scary psychotic goth ways and this happened to kids because of the behavior behavior in the main of these spooky kids. So it was a genuine danger to the lifestyles of actual goths who were just living their lives. Even if they were confused teenagers writing violent poems, the vast majority of them weren't carrying them out and weren't doing any of this edgelord behavior and carrying knives around and being threatening, you know, and pressing knives up against the neck of their girlfriend in the middle of McDonald's so they could draw a bit of blood and then lick it off her neck and make sure as many people saw as possible. You know, literally this is the kind of stuff that was going on at this time and it was embarrassing and it was tarring the reputation of everyone. But like say, religion was the other factor. The, obviously today there are still a lot of goths who are pagan, who are Wiccan, who are various forms of witch, but back in the 90s and 2000s, what with the craft coming out and stuff like this, there was a big focus on, on Wicca and on paganism and a lot of I would say probably the majority of goths around this time were dabbling in some form of alternative religion, but the vast, vast majority of them were dabbling in the good parts of these religions. So people who were actively pagan or Wiccan and were wearing pentacles or who had any kind of witchy things in their bedrooms, well, suddenly your parents were going to be freaking out about that because there were all these spooky kids who wanted to take the power trip of the craft that it had given them that all you know goths are into scary witchcraft stuff paganism and wicca got tarred with a very very black brush at that point that it was like if your kid is wearing a pentacle if they're doing any of these things they're a devil worshiper they're a satanist they're doing awful things they're going to get into drugs all of these peaceful chilled out alternative people who just were into the music and wanted to express themselves through clothing and found beauty in darkness and wanted the freedom to practice their peaceful religions. All of this was being completely tarred by these bullies, um, these edgelord cringy bullies who wanted to hang around in malls making a complete nuisance of themselves, embarrassing the whole scene and they really did rally around Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson was the figure that was the most inspirational to them, I think, you know, that he was so controversial in those days, that he had been linked to the Columbine sh even though, as it turns out, Dylan and Eric didn't even like Marilyn Manson's music. Uh, nobody knew that back in those days because uh, Dylan and Eric were minors, therefore the case records were closed for 15 years, hence the fact that the informative book didn't come out until then. Um, so even though Marilyn Manson had nothing to do with this, if you were a bit dumb and you wanted to be an edgelord, then you knew Marilyn Manson had this reputation as, oh my god, he inspired the school shitting, so you rallied around him. And he did have all these, you know, these really kind of satanic sounding sinister lyrics. He did have this whole very slick, very conceptual package built up around albums like Antichrist Superstar and Spooky Kids really fell for that hook, line and sinker. If anyone ever asked you in the first days of your friendship what music are you into, you definitely didn't name Marilyn Manson because immediately it would be like, you're not a proper goth, you're into this. You could talk about being into Nine Inch Nails and that was fine. Nine Inch Nails didn't have the same stigma, um, but you didn't say Marilyn Manson and you did not dance to his songs when anyone was looking. But when you came to know someone well enough, you would usually have the talk and be like, so... I kind of like Marilyn Manson now and then, what about you? And it would always turn out that, yeah, they they liked it too and you'd start listening to it a little bit together, but it always felt like a bit of a dirty pleasure back then. And the majority of that obviously has gone away now in the modern day. Um, although 
what really blows my mind is Marilyn Manson's enduring appeal to very very young teenagers you know kids from the age of like 12 to 14 going for his full aesthetic you know the the, the crazy like smudged lipstick and the the really smudgy eyes and the mismatched contact lenses and I do tend to find there is still a toxic attitude um that does follow around people who wear very strong Marilyn Manson stylistics. I mean, I'm not going to name names here, but there was a big drama recently um, between a, a kind of gothic person who did have very Manson-like stylistics and was followed by a lot of people who had Manson-like stylistics and idolised that look. Um, and they had a falling out with their friend who was also in the public arena and these two people fell out and the comment threads that went on were the most disgusting, immature, bullying twittery I have seen in so long. Like, I was disgusted, honestly, from, from seeing how mature and how intelligent the goth scene can be from the stuff that I see on my own videos and on my own Instagram and how lucky I am with you guys to see this kind of mob mentality, bullying, um, picking on someone for having mental health issues, picking on someone uh, over absolute hearsay, taking sides based on the fact that you liked the stylistics of one person and not the other um, when it was a, a private debate between friends and it was this absolute mob rule and it was disgusting. It was absolutely disgusting. I didn't make a video about it because I didn't want to call attention to it, um, honestly. I, do, I just felt, let this die down. For the sake of the participant who's being attacked here, let it die down. Don't add fuel to the fire. But this was all, this was the culture that surrounded the social media of someone with a strongly Marilyn Manson aesthetic. Um, I tend to find that the Manson aesthetic, like being a Marilyn Manson fan, that's one thing, that's, that's normal, that's, 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 you know, pretty much everyone alternative is a bit of a Manson fan, but people who go really out of their way to, to mimic his aesthetic, um, that aesthetic, it, it doesn't, it's very much about intimidation, isn't it? You know, it's very in your face. It's very, I'm such a freak, look at me. It generally hints at an aggressive attitude. And that might be an aggressive attitude because you've been bullied and you've been shown hate yourself. And so you're just reflecting it back at the world. If my kid, I don't have a kid, but if I had a kid, if they started dressing like that, I would want to know what was going on with them. Like, in terms of school, in terms of mental health. Why are you so determined to scare people off? Why are you so determined to hide behind this mask that somebody else's mask, it's Marilyn Manson's mask, it's Twiggy Ramirez's mask, and you're you're putting it on just, just to hide behind and to threaten other people. Why are you so determined to become this angry looking character? What What is going on with you? Would be my attitude. Um, so yeah, the whole spooky kid thing, it hasn't gone away completely to this day. I would never have predicted, I don't think anyone would have predicted back in 2000 that 20 years later Marilyn Manson would be, if anything, even more popular, would be a household name. Um, yeah, it's quite crazy, but um, anyway, hopefully that explains why some of the older, I would say all of the older goths you're going to meet have a bit of a view when it comes to Marilyn Manson and you don't tend to see older goths wearing Marilyn Manson merchandise. I think we all we grew up too much with with this culture of I'm not being a part of this bullying immature edgelord subculture that's going on in malls everywhere with people flashing knives you know <laughs> hissing at people all of this stuff I'm, I'm not being a part of that um and that's hard to shake when, you know, when it's the culture you grew up with for so many years, it's it's hard to shake. Um, <laughs> even if you do like Marilyn Manson stuff, but I'm, I, you know, I'm quite happy to say these days, yes, I've been to Marilyn Manson gigs and yes, I do own what, like d d d d three, four, maybe five of his albums, what with Hollywood and the, the early ones too, that's maybe five. Anyway, this is a whole waffle. Tell me if you had experiences in the 90s and the 2000s. Have you ever heard any of this? to this day um, and if you are someone who really rocks a Marilyn Manson aesthetic 
Um, have you found that it creates a toxic environment on your social media? Um, or do you actually find that you get really friendly, really chill, non-dramatic people on your social media? And, uh, and actually the bad examples I've seen in recent years have maybe been the minority? Tell me these things. Are you someone who's rocked a full-on Manson aesthetic for like six years or more? Because <laughs> that's, like I said, I, I tend to see it as kind of a fleeting phase or something that people do for um for kind of social media publicity more than like a genuine this is this is my long-term go-to look um i don't know so so tell me things like say i will link the video below about the whole post columbine era oh and if you have any more kind of like 90s 2000s goth topics that you would like me to waffle about then drop that below too or better still drop me an instagram comment i see those much faster i really do but uh, anyway this is long i'm going to shut up now okay over and out bye, -bye. <laughs>